I want to touch a little bit upon the purpose of the zakat. Of course, it is to clarify your intentions and so on and so forth. How does it help the society? How does, is it enough to remove the poverty from a society? Right? I mean, that's the objective. People who have it, people who do not have it, people who do not have it need some help so they have, their needs can be fulfilled. I wanted to do some analysis on some Islamic countries like Pakistan, like Malaysia, like Indonesia, like uh, Middle Eastern countries as to how much zakat they collect and how they distribute. Is there any poverty in those countries or not? Unfortunately, data is not available for those countries. So I said, okay, just as an exercise, just as an exercise, because there is no zakat, the people in America do not believe in the institution of zakat. They do not think that zakat should be given. But just for a moment, think that if everybody adopted the system of taking the savings and giving two and a half percent of their savings for charity, how will that impact the society here in America? Alhamdulillah, the numbers are available, and I went through some numbers. You know, the privately held wealth in this country is something like $97 trillion. You know what a trillion dollar is? A thousand billion makes one trillion. And I have, I have some, some data here that I collected. And uh, so $98.15 trillion is held privately by people in America, okay? And if they were to give, uh, and the, we got to see this may be distributed in a way that the poor people do not have to give, right? So I said, okay, what is the top 20% of the people? How much money do they have? 20% of the richest people in America, how much money they have? And it turns out that they have 85% of the entire wealth which brings it to $83.4 trillion is held by top 20%, richest 20% people here in America. Now the bottom 20%, uh, about 13.5% of those live on below the poverty level, and some of them may be in loans and this, uh, other difficulties, sickness and so on and so forth. I said, okay, maybe 20% of the poorest Americans need some kind of a help. And 20% of the purest, poorest Americans with the population of 330 million population is of America, right? 20% of the population is 66 million people. If, you, if the top 20% who are holding $83.4 trillion, if they give 2.5% of that, you know how much the zakat they will be paying? 2.09 trillion dollars is the zakat money that will be collected from only the top 20% of the richest people. And if that money was to be equally distributed among the bottom 20% of the people who are poor and who need help and so on, do you know how much each person will receive? $31,700. Each individual will receive $31,700 from the zakat that is paid, that is required to be paid if they agree with the zakat concept that by the top 20%. I'm not counting the middle 60%. Middle, yeah, how that will, maybe that will work out. So does that, you know, $31,700 per person. And if it's a family of four, how much money they will receive in charity? About $120,000. Will that solve their needs? Will that solve their poverty problem? This is what Zakat is intending to do. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has intended to do, that the top richest people must share their wealth, not all of their wealth, only 2.5%. It's not, it's, not, it's not a lot. But see how much it does to the poor and rich people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says, he, Wallahu alimun hakim, he really has devised a system. You know, the two beauties of the system are 
that is not calculated on the income. Because you may have a lot of needs. Whatever income you are getting, you are spending everything. That's, there's no zakat for that. But if you are holding some money, if you are getting more than what you need, and you are holding it in your savings account, any account of, the, of, the, of any kind, and you have not needed it for one full year, just two and a half percent of it needs to be given for the, for the poor and needy people. And, and, and that will really solve the problem. So we know in this, this solved two problems. The relationship between those who have it and those who do not have it will be based on solid grounds, not on the basis of any make, do, making any favors or any obligations. And second, the problem is, can really be solved if, if it is in, implemented in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has visited. My calculation, by the way, is very simple. Don't come to me and ask, what about the land being held and this and that? What about buildings being held? No, yeah, the, the rate of zakat is different on different categories. This is a very simple calculation that I have done and, and saying that, yes, it can, the problem can be solved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, of course, people who are not Muslims, they do not believe in zakat. We cannot tell them to, uh, but those of us who believe in the, in the zakat, those of us who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those of us who believe in Quran and Majid, we must make sure that we are practitioners, practitioners of the system of zakat just as we pray, just as we fast. We must pay the zakat. Just as we, we do hajj, we must pay the zakat and then see and zakat will be mostly distributed among the Muslims. And what, wouldn't it be wonderful if the Chicago area Muslims pay their zakat regularly and then all the poverty in the, among the Muslims in the Chicago area is, is gone. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Would it not present a picture, Islam has a solution for poverty. Islam has a solution for hunger. Islam has a solution for homelessness. All those things can be solved and, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the guidance to practice this pillar of Islam and demonstrate that Islam has a system that really solves the society.